have a rig in my life. And I've always wanted to, like, people don't notice this, but like Charlie Blocks as well right. works every weekend. He's an artist that he might not get his credit in Jamaica, but definitely traveling. He travels every week. He works, he works, and then not only that, he goes to the States and all those places too, and he does in the Latin market. Right. And he works consistently. Most dancehall artists right now do shows for 20, 30 minutes, whatever. Shaggy and Sean shows are 90 minute shows. Right. And the thing is that they have crossed over. Mm -hmm. So their, their content is crossed over into the into the more pop, pop market. Type, right. So they, are, they have a wider audience that knows them. Welcome to Reggae My Light is your musical catalyst. Now, today we have a special guest on the channel, Mr. Aaron Spence, Kaboom Nation himself. Of course, he's the CEO and founder of Kaboom Nation, the entertainment consultancy agency in Jamaica, one of the leading, might I add. He has managed the likes of Shaggy and Sean Paul, booking them for overseas and local shows. So today, we want to talk to Mr. Spence about that dealing with Shaggy and Sean Paul plus all the other artists plus what it is like overseas for dancehall artists what is the reception for dancehall artists and reggae artists in the international market Mr. Spence, Aaron, welcome to Reggae My Lightis. Thank you for having me, thank you for having me Alright, so just an overall synopsis of what uh, the agency entails Alright, so Kaboom Nation is an entertainment consultancy agency yeah. um, Most people know it as a booking agency so what we do is help, um, let's say, promoters, corporate entities, mm -hmm. those anybody looking to keep an um, event, we help them to find the right fit for their event. Mm -hmm. So they might have the, the right, they might have the artist in mind that they want to use. They might not know who they want to mm -hmm. use. They might be like, mm, I want to keep a dancehall show, cool, and it's like, but I don't know what's the right fit for this right. based on where they are in the country, where the, which country we are in, whatever. And then based on that, I give them. Um, suggestions right. as to who to use and what works best in terms of budgeting and and market and everything like that okay so after the promoters reach out to you that's when you reach out to the artists yes okay. yes yes I, I i have to know that there's a viable event mm -hmm. possible and then from there after my initial conversations with promoters or corporate entities whoever is keeping the event after that conversation mm -hmm. is when i then move on to um talking to the various artists, artists. Yeah. Um, what's your relationship like as a booking agency or a consultancy agency with the artists? Because Sorry. we know that the managers are probably the closest persons to the artists. But yeah. where does your relationship fit into that? All right. So my relationship is mostly with, mani with management. Right. Um, I know artists and we're friends and we talk and all that stuff too. But when it comes down to business, mm. it's me and the managers who work out the deals and work out exactly what we're going to do. And that's where most of my communication lies oh. with, with the artist teams. Once the artist has a management team, of course. Because okay. there, are there are some rare cases where you're speaking to the artist themselves. Mm. And like with different other type of entertainers, like hosts and those stuff, Sometimes I don't have a team, so you talk directly to them. Right. So you are pretty much a middleman in I between am the promoter. The definition of, of a middleman. Right. <laughs> right. So how important is that middleman being the person who lays on between uh, promoter and artist? All right. You have some. You have some schools are thinking that thing that don't need a middleman, right. but the benefits of them are that um, you get to keep entertainment is a funny space. Mm. So you, you want to keep, everyone wants to be happy and, and jovial and stuff. So the middleman allows that relationship to be like that. Anytime the promoter and the artist are talking, it's only to smile, take pictures and talk about how great the show was. It's not about the behind the scenes stuff. I like about when, oh, well, we need this money to be paid. No, and we need this thing to be sorted out. If there's an extra weird request that is there, like last minute, oh, we need more flights, need more this. Those things break down relationships over in terms of the happy stuff so if the, if the artist and artist management team and the, art and the promoter are talking directly about that all the time when it comes to showtime there's almost a little sense of like you know them boy they never did want to pay for that and yeah. whatever and yeah. that you get a little vibe like that so me you know i just keep the peace mm. i'm the peacemaker right. so i keep the peace on both sides no, letting everybody know that that's an outrageous request or no you can't be asked so that. pretty you much you're a negotiator i am is, i am a peacemaker or not a negotiator <laughs> but a peacemaker I'm a peacemaker to yeah. make the whole thing just flow mm. um flawless and then i deal with all logistics and all of those things so just to make sure that you just tell me what you need, you tell me what you need, and I make sure that everything happens, so that both parties are happy at the end okay, of the day. Okay, so you don't decide 
uh, the, 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 what do you call it now, the grand total of what it costs for the artist well, after liaison with the manager. Well, me and the, well, based on the, so it's a whole thing. So I speak to the promoter, I speak to the, um, the artist. Mm -hmm. So if the promoter tells me he's going to do a show and tells me his capacity for his venue and that, then I have an idea of how much money he can make. Okay. And then, so when I speak to an artist now, if an artist comes to me with a price that is too outrageous, I can literally, that don't make sense mm -hmm. right now because he can't afford you. It right. won't fit in the space. Based on the space. Just based on the space or whatever. And just, it just do it's a business. And it's a business on both sides. So yes, the artists are there to entertain and collect the food because they put in the work. But at the same time, the promoters are in it for profit as well. Right. So it's a business on both ends. And I'm just there to make sure that everyone remembers that. Mm -hmm. that, will, that Yes, I know you need. I know you need your ten dollars, but the promoter also needs his ten dollars to make it make sense mm -hmm. for him to even keep the show. Cause there's a relationship there that they don't think they need each other, but they definitely do need each other. Right, and that's one of the the concerns I've heard over time yeah. in dancehall that most of the artists tend to go too high with their prices. Yeah, um, you have encountered that before, as you said. Well, yeah, def definitely. What the thing is that you have instances where you can hot. Mm -hmm. And when you're hot now, you're hot. So you you tend to then have a higher self worth. Right. I'm not saying that it's it's invalid, because if you're hot, you're hot right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. But then it's all a business at the end of the day. So you have to. It's, it's just about negotiating, as you say, and just managing stuff. So you can. There are people that they're like, yo, I want this and I want this, and that's all I want. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. But after you talk to them and you reason them and show them the maths to say that I get that you're aware that maybe if this venue was bigger right then you could get that right. but it just won't add up back at the end of the day right so it's about reaching a compromise at reaching the end a of the compromise day. and just and just keeping the peace all right <laughs> so you talk about hot who are some of the hot artists i mentioned that you work with shaggy and sean paul yeah um naturally those will be probably the two biggest um, artists that they work with in terms of Jamaicans. In terms of Jamaicans. Right. Oh, but before we go to the international mm -hmm. scene, like international artists, who are some of the other artists that you work with? This is talking pre COVID or during well, COVID? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> start with pre COVID <laughs> and then in, in, the, in the COVID era because we know COVID have a lot to do with Yeah, COVID the has changed the whole, change the whole landscape, spectrum the right whole now. landscape of what the yeah. business is and how we do business and everything like that. Right. But definitely leading up to before COVID. The hotter acts locally, mm. talking about getting booked locally, right, okay. and internationally as well. Okay, well, if and I can segment that, as well. Well, right. all right. So you had like the Shensia, Shensia was bubbling, Ding mm. Dong was very hot locally as mm. well. He was on everything. Mm. Um, Popcorn is hot, but he's very selective mm. in the gigs that he takes on, and he actually doesn't really do much local stuff because he has his own show, right, in, in St. Thomas, yeah, unruly fest. Mm. So he doesn't really take on a lot of stuff locally. Um, what's it, Shen, Ding, Popcorn, you have, and then you have the, the, the street acts that were, I call them street acts, yeah. kind of differentiated, just for my terms, mm -hmm. but so we, have, we have like the TJs and the TJs and the Javilanis was hot, the Style G was right. here for a while. So when it so says street, street, street acts, what meaning you mean? just Meaning just, they do more parties. Okay, like a wedi wedi or... Not necessarily a wedding wedding, but just in terms of different community street co okay, community okay. outdoor party right. events. And so it wouldn't be like a a, a plush event like a chilling on the farm or mm -hmm. something like that. Because they don't really carry acts, they just keep a party. Right. But then you have like different events around different communities and they will want the artist come through and whatever. Mm -hmm. And that is when you have like a, a Javilani or a style G or um T J. There's a lot of those as well. Mm -hmm. Skilly Bang was bubbling at the time when everything was going to, but then uh, COVID came and kind of halted that. So he's waiting to, to jump out on the scene as mm -hmm. well. Um, but yeah, those are most of that. And then for corporate, of course, the corporate acts were like more like the Shen mm -hmm. and the. I did a lot of corporate stuff right. with Ding Dong. There are a lot of corporate stuff with Freddie McGregor. Mm -hmm. and like Barrington Levy? Barrington Levy doesn't do a lot of local stuff mm -hmm. because his band lives um, overseas. overseas right. And he only wants to perform on band and stuff. Okay. So, like, no. so there's a lot of little stuff that come into play with in terms of which artists you can use for different stuff. So th these are the pre-COVID um, are pre -COVID era. Yeah. So what about the, the COVID During era? During COVID, now, right. no. I would definitely say that... Um, Oh, Massacre was hot too. Okay. Massacre was definitely 
and fire. When, we, we just establish when they say hot in Jamaica, are they have a international appeal? Both, to, both, right? both. These are artists that we're working week in, week out, week mm -hmm. in, week out. Uh, honorable mention, I've always wanted to, like, people don't notice this, but like Charlie Blacks as well right. works every weekend. He's an artist that he might not get his credit in Jamaica, but definitely traveling. He travels every week. Especially in Latin America. Especially like in Latin America. America and those and, uh, definitely. Countries. He works. He mm. works. And then not only that, he goes to the States and all those places too. And he does in the Latin market. Right. And he works consistently right, throughout the year. How, how Charlie Blacks managed to achieve that? Because we, we, some of the names are called yeah. might want to run Jamaica. Yeah. The Jamaican space mm -hmm. and feel like say, that is their reach. Yeah. And they're a king for a want a better term. But Charlie Blacks. Um, you know, here of him a lot in Jamaica, maybe. Yeah. Um, on the radio, yes, mm -hmm. few radio stations, mm -hmm. but as I say, big overseas. Yeah. But why, why he managed to do that? You know, him put in the work, yeah. but um, why other artists not really big like that? Well, what, what helped Charlie Black significantly too was the single, Party, a party animal. animal. So that definitely blew up in those markets. And then that is a in for him. Because all of and all of his content is kind of consistent around that party lifestyle. Let's right. have a good time, party vibes, fun, whatever. So the party animal hit that gets him through the door, mm -hmm. and then when he goes into the market and then performs the other songs, people start to do their research and be like, okay, he sings party animal. What else? What else? Right. And it happens with a lot of artists too, because they have artists who are grinding for five, ten years, mm -hmm. putting out music that no one cares about. But then one of their songs might hit. Mm -hmm. And then when that hit, everybody starts to do the research now. And it's like, yo, what else them sing? What else them sing? Oh, I like this. Oh, and then you say all of the other songs, all of a sudden starting to get traction. Mm -hmm. And these songs have been out for a while. So Party Animal definitely opened that door for him. Right. And then from then, he hasn't dropped the ball and just kept, just kept it moving. Mm -hmm. So pretty much, uh, you just need that one hit sometimes. Y y you need... Is, all right, with, with Pratt Animal, it's, just, it's not a normal hit. That's like a mega right, hit. Right. <laughs> That's like a, like a mega thing. So that definitely put him on the map mm. for sure. And then his, and as I say, and that's, th that's the first part of it. But you have to keep putting out consistent content as mm. well that is probably similar or just that keeps everyone's attention. And he's been doing that. Right. And while he might not get the praise in Jamaica, as like, you're one of the biggest artists of Jamaica definitely works every week mm. and, is, and is keeping that flag flying high. And uh, it's the same thing with Shaggy and Sean Paul. Yeah. Not a ho their household name in Jamaica because of their work over the years, yeah. right? But um, internationally, they are much bigger. Yeah. I was listening to an interview with Chris Gale yeah. and he was saying that, of course, the universe was saying yeah. that, you know, in places like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, yeah. dance hall and reggae, not big there, yeah. but the artists that get played mostly in clubs in those countries are the same, Shaggy and Sean Paul. Definitely, definitely. And you know, many people in Jamaica might think it's because they have an uptown background and mm -hmm. they have that look. But having worked with them closely, I've booked for them um, several times. Yeah. That's far from the truth. It's a hard work. It's definitely the content and the work. I mean, I won't, I won't say that there aren't certain doors that are open because because of um, appearance, because mm. that is a part of the image. The image right. the, the, that is a part of the artist's package as well. There's image, there's whatever, there's, um, there's content, there's mm. image, there's work ethic. And then as it relates to also the stage show part of it, like there's that performance aspect as well. So they definitely do put on shows and, they, and their shows are, most dancehall artists right now do shows for 20, 30 minutes, whatever. Shaggy and Sean shows are 90 minute shows. Right. I constant moving, constant thing. There's, there's choreography, there's everything. I mean, there's choreography in the other shows as well. I don't want to belittle anybody's right. thing. But the magnitude of those shows are just a much bigger production mm -hmm. and overall. But most of those shows, Shaggy yeah. is the only mm -hmm. artist performing. Sean Paul is the only artist they, performing. They do Art. standalone shows, but they also do a lot of festivals okay. across across everywhere as well. There, there are no people reach out to them because, and the thing is that they have crossed over, mm -hmm. so their their content is crossed over into the into the more pop, pop market. Type, right. So they are, they have a wider audience that knows them, and 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 that and what a lot of people don't realize, especially with um touring mm -hmm. and stuff. In Jamaica, it's easy to, okay, you're hot now, I can book a show, mm -hmm. I can fill the place. Right. That same contest, con um, that same concept, thinking, right. concept, yeah, is overseas as well. Uh, but what they do is that they quantify it. So mm -hmm. they, they need to know that you can fill consistent 
venues, venues right. and then based on your numbers from filling consi consistent venues they don't say okay you can do a festival and you can do this you can do that because then you're you're big enough to can contribute to the overall pull right to, to the festival and that's where the Sean and Sean and Shaggy's market now are huge because of the crossover mm. and they just they just have the numbers right. you have a rig in my life